The movie opens up with the US president announcing to the nation that his administration is doing everything possible to ensure that their way of life continues. He assures that the priority is to ensure the safety of all American citizens. It is then revealed that a biochemical weapons related disaster has wiped out the majority of humanity and rendered the air unbreathable. Due to this, the United States government seems to have hastily constructed a few makeshift underground bunkers where some scientists are kept in cryogenic sleep until and unless the air is no longer toxic. Each bunker is maintained by a couple of workers who are awakened for two hours every six months. In the next scene, we are introduced to two workers at one such facility named Bauer and Cartwright. Bauer wakes up from his slumber and glides out of his pod, feeling nauseous. Being an engineer by profession, he begins to examine some computer displays before his co-worker Cartwright awakens. Following this, the two go about their normal lists of tasks during one wake cycle. They inspect the air quality above and note that <laughs> it is still toxic. They also notice that the workers from other facilities have already checked in. However, the communication between facilities does not appear to be feasible. Cartwright examines photographs of his friends and family before Bauer reminds him that they are all deceased. That's why they call him Buzzkill Bauer. Bauer then hands him some data to examine, only to discover that there has been seismic activity. As a result, they go check on one of the other sleepers to make sure everything is okay. In the midst of this, Cartwright looks at a photograph of his wife Abby and has a hallucination that she is beside him. This vision of his wife prompts him to talk to her, but Bauer is not pleased with this distraction. Cartwright believes that the sleepers are still alive and that they are the future of humanity. He has even developed a formula to determine how long they should remain in their sleep. Based on his calculations, he predicts that they may need to remain asleep for at least 20 more shifts. However, Bauer whines that the two of them are squandering their lives for the sake of the sleepers' survival. Just before the two hours are up, unfortunately, Cartwright's sleeping chamber catches fire as a result of the recent seismic activity. <laughs> there was a 0.05% chance of him being awake for this. He screams for Bauer to bring the fire extinguisher, but by the time they manage to put out the fire, the sleeping pod has been destroyed. Bauer also injures his hand in the process. As the stopwatch reaches zero, the lights go out and the air supply is cut off. With the help of a flashlight, Cartwright reads the manual and learns that there is an emergency override. The two of them frantically search for the emergency air supply valve and eventually manage to locate it and turn it on. As the duo waits for the air supply to kick in, they share personal details about themselves. Bauer admits to having a wife and three daughters, and because one of the requirements for the job was that he be unmarried, he chose to lie. Shortly after, the power is restored, the reserve air supply is turned on, and the clock is reset for another two hours. Without further ado, the two proceed to the storeroom in search of a spare chamber. Sadly, they don't find one, so they are forced to look for another storage facility. With the help of the map, they walk to the basement despite the fact that Cartwright is severely claustrophobic. Fortunately, their hard work pays off as they are able to find a spare chamber, which they bring back to the facility and set up. When it's finished, Cartwright suggests that he should go to sleep first, in case there are any issues. However, he stalls for a few moments, so Bauer decides to go in instead. Just when the pod activates, Bauer hears a leaking sound and realizes that the air inside side is thinning out. As Cartwright goes to check on it, Bauer desperately screams to be let out, but Cartwright doesn't hear him. Suddenly, the chamber malfunctions and sucks Bauer down, causing him to suffocate. He is about to die a painful death when Cartwright arrives in the nick of time and frees him by cutting him loose. However, in the process, he also destroys the chamber. Now that there are no other spare chambers in the facility, Bauer insists that they eject a random sleeping person in order to free up a chamber. Cartwright refuses, stating that they are obligated to look after those people and keep them alive. However, Bauer argues that they should prioritize their own survival over others. Cartwright finally gives in and considers using morphine to euthanize one of the sleepers. But right then, he has another hallucination of Abby, who convinces him that there must be another way. Seeing his hesitation, Bauer decides to do it himself, but Cartwright stops him, saying that they are not murderers. This leads to a minor physical altercation, which ends after both of them become exhausted. Subsequently, they examine the blueprints and discover a code, ABC, that belongs to another facility. Cartwright believes that the ABC facility is adjacent to theirs and may contain spare parts. Hearing this, Bauer warns that reaching it would necessitate breaking the air seal, potentially releasing toxic air. The duo knows that the mission is a risky one, but it is something that they have to complete. Hence, with no other options available, Cartwright dons a hazmat suit and exits the facility, with Bauer providing guidance 
experience over the radio. Along the way, Cartwright encounters a significant amount of blue dust, which Bauer identifies as an airborne impurity. The latter also fixes some cameras, which makes navigation easier for him. In the next scene, Cartwright finds the entrance to the sister facility, but finds that the lock is jammed. However, with some advice from Bauer, he eventually manages to gain entry. Inside, he shockingly discovers that the facility has been inactive for a considerable time, and that everyone there is deceased. This makes Cartwright feel hopeless about his chances of survival. But just then, he has another hallucination of Abby. She motivates him to stay strong and persevere to the last breath. Meanwhile, Bauer directs him to an air duct located about 10 yards away. Cartwright is initially hesitant to enter the duct due to his claustrophobia, but he has no other option. As he makes his way inside, he comes across numerous dead bodies, adding to the difficulty of the situation. The radio signal also begins to weaken as he proceeds further, so Bauer attempts to boost it up. He looks for a knife and finds it in the toolbox rather than where he left it earlier. This raises his suspicion, so he decides to check the video footage and determine how the knife ended up there. After reviewing the footage, he shockingly discovers that Cartwright was standing next to him the entire time when he was close to suffocating in the spare chamber. This indicates that the latter may have attempted to kill him, but changed his mind at the last minute. Meanwhile, Cartwright senses that something is wrong. He finally makes his way to the facility and starts to look around. The ceiling opens onto the planet's surface, and as he looks out, he sees that the city has been demolished by a nuclear bomb. Cartwright assumes that this must have occurred a long time ago. After this, as he is exploring the area, he discovers that the sleeper's chambers have all been destroyed, despite the computer system reporting all workers in the facility as alive and well during previous wake cycles. It appears to be a deception so as to maintain their sanity and make them believe that they are not alone. Bauer, who is devastated by the video footage, expresses that the entire system is a lie and that no one can be trusted. Cartwright also starts to believe that they might be the only ones who survived. Now that he is running low on air, he heads back to their own facility. He reaches the door and initiates the decontamination process. On the other side of the door, he sees Bauer holding the knife and asks where he found it. Cartwright realizes that Bauer is aware of the truth, so he asks to be let in so that he can explain. However, Bauer becomes furious and points his gun at Cartwright, accusing him of trying to kill him. He also regards Cartwright as a threat to both him as well as the sleeper. When Bauer refuses to let him in, Cartwright, who is running out of air, rushes back to the ABC facility. At one point, he is lost as he can't find any way out. At the same time, he experiences another vision of his wife, who points him in the direction of the air ducts. How the hell does she know that? In the midst of all this, Bauer berates him over the radio, saying that the betrayal and lies hurt him the most. However, Cartwright simply ignores him and continues on his path, leading him back to his own facility. He removes his hazmat suit and tries to head inside the facility's control room, but Bauer blocks his way with a gun, threatening to shoot him. Cartwright quickly takes cover and tries to reason with him, emphasizing that they might be the only ones left alive. Regardless, Bauer continues to pursue Cartwright through the facility, claiming that he cannot let him go because he's afraid he will kill him in his sleep. Eventually, after a prolonged chase, Cartwright manages to find refuge in a medical bay where he obtains some morphine. He thinks of using it to murder his co-worker, but then again, he starts having cold feet. While Cartwright is deliberating, Abby appears in front of him and urges him to kill Bauer or else he will. She convinces him that he must do it in order for them to be together in the future. Following Abby's encouragement, Cartwright returns to the control room carrying a gas bottle but suddenly, Bauer appears from behind and shoots him in the shoulder. As Cartwright lies on the ground bleeding, he shows Bauer a photo and pleads for mercy. During this, he also begins to talk to Abby, but Bauer yells that there is no one here. In a moment of distraction, Cartwright seizes the opportunity and attacks Bauer, causing him to drop his gun. He then runs out of the control room before any further damage is done. Meanwhile, Bauer picks up the photograph, walks to the sleeper pods, and finds its match. After realizing that Cartwright's wife is in one of the sleepers. He threatens him to come out or else he will kill Abby. The situation becomes very precarious, but Cartwright finally gains the upper hand by sneaking up on Bauer and injecting a large dose of morphine into him. Bauer turns around and points the gun at Cartwright, but he soon holds it down and drops on the floor. As the morphine starts to take control over his body, Bauer accepts his fate and makes peace with Cartwright. He asks his co-worker to take care of his wife before passing out out forever.
Following this, Cartwright goes inside a sleeping pod, and before entering cryo sleep, he talks to himself that he is now the only one left to keep the place functional. In an epilogue, Cartwright wakes up for another cycle, but this time he appears to have aged by many decades. The sleeper's pods also start to open one by one as the facility system automatically wakes them up. All of them exit their chambers and make their way to the Earth's surface, including Abby. The movie ends as Cartwright approaches his wife, and they share a tearful embrace, finally reunited after all these years. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.